Welcome to Reseller Madness. I'm Will. Or am I? Pretty much every console in the last 25 years has gotten its own racing wheels. Some have several. The variety is staggering and the prices range dramatically. I won't bore you with a complete catalog of every racing wheel ever made. Rather, I want to highlight the types of wheels, share some widely applicable niche knowledge, and help you spot good ones to flip. At the cheap end, there are simple controller holders like the Wii Wheel. Marketed especially to the Mario Kart crowd, it uses the motion control feature of the Wii Mote. It snaps in ah, right here like this, and the buttons are passed through. Simple and cheap. I buy these for a buck and I send them first class. Not going to get rich off of it, but they sell easy and quick. The Nintendo OEM ones are great. The off-brand ones, not so much. They sell much slower and are harder to make a profit on. I occasionally see wireless racing wheel controllers for consoles like the Xbox 360. These are standalone motion control wheels with batteries. It functions similar to the Wii wheel, but works as a standalone controller rather than a controller holder. Always check the battery compartment for corrosion. Easy 20 to 30 bucks now in 2022. Moving up considerably, there are racing wheels mounted on a wheelbase. They have buttons on the wheel, paddles on the back are more of a premium feature. If you found one with those paddles, you probably found a bit of money. Better wheels have a feature called force feedback, which resists you as you drive, giving you a better experience. It lets the feel of the rugged terrain and cause spin outs and oversteering to feel very dramatic. Usually the controller and the power cords are permanently attached. If there's no controller cord, that wheel base is either wireless or it's incomplete. Cords are usually cheap to replace unless they are some proprietary connector. Watch out for damage on integrated cords. If the cord isn't removable and is frayed, that wheel is toast. Sometimes the wheel has a wobble in it, which may not be a fatal flaw. It might just need the screws tightened. I don't like seeing cracked wheel bases or worn out grips. Buttons with unidentified goo around them usually indicate a spill and cast doubt on how well the buttons will work. Most wheel bases come with the clamp. If that clamp is missing, it can often be replaced. I work the replacement cost into my negotiations. If the clamp is broken off, I'll pass on that item. If there's a port in the back like this, it means it can accept pedals. The presence of pedals usually indicates a higher value. All plastic ones are cheaper and subject to damage. Metal pedals are preferred and less likely to be broken. I may pass up on plastic pedal bases, but I'll almost always pick up the ones with metal parts. Cracked pedals are not something that I'll buy unless it's super valuable and worth parting out. Another good feature is the shifter may be attached or a separate item. For whatever reason, I find wheels and pedals somewhat regularly, but I never see shifters in the wild. If I saw one, I'd buy it. They're niche, but they're certainly profitable. Boxes do add a bit of value to the item, so I like picking up ones with boxes. I love seeing branded wheels. Ferrari, PlayStation, Xbox, GT, they're all good signs. It always makes sense to check the model number online. Many of these look very similar, and a small difference in model number can mean a big difference in price. Special edition ones with unusual colors or logos can mean more money. The model number should turn up info on what system the wheel works with, but at a glance, the type of controller cord coming out of it is a good clue. Old PC gaming port ones, like the ones that look like a VGA port, are rather obsolete, but USB versions may be more current for either console or PC. Older consoles have their own connectors. I use eBay to figure out the current value of my racing wheels, but Amazon's also a good choice, and prices can vary across platforms. Brands I often see the most in the racing wheel market. I see Thrustmaster and Logitech a lot. Almost everything I find is made by them. There's also Hori, Superdrive, Numskull, PXN, Doyo, Madcats, and others. I try to avoid the low end of the price range, as the more moderate to expensive ones are generally more reliable and better sellers. On the premium end, Fanatec, Gomez, Simplicity, Simucube, Sim Steering, Sim Experience, and some Thrustmasters. Real carbon fiber can be a hint at value too. Some of these go north of $1,000. I don't see them in the wild, but I sure wish I did. Tell me in the comments if you know of other brands I should have mentioned. There are a lot of different stands on the market. Cheap ones start around 100 bucks, and the sky's the limit from there. Some like this one are a simple wheel stand. Others allow you to attach a seat or have an integrated seat included. The serious ones have motors to move the rig around and let you feel simulated motions on the in-game vehicle. The bigger the rig, the more shipping will cost. Keep shipping in mind when you're considering flipping stands and rigs. Cheap ones like this usually end up selling locally for me, and expensive ones could be worth shipping. Make sure the profit margin is there before you buy. I always test my wheels and pedals before selling them. Shipping one way is expensive enough. 
I sure don't want to pay return shipping on a faulty wheel. As of now, I favor UPS as the cheapest option for shipping bulky stuff like this. Granted, shipping options and the value of items have a habit of changing from year to year. Check out my buddy RTA Motorsports. He's got a pro setup and he uses Fanatec Club Sport shifters, Fanatec Racing Wheels, Fanatec Handbrake, Pro Simu Cockpit, Husink Veld Pedals, Refurb G2, the works. He knows how to do the racing sim thing right. Flippers who want to learn the high-end of things could learn a lot about the brands and models he talks about and enjoy seeing it in action. Link in the description. Give him a follow if you're into the niche. Thanks for watching Reseller Madness.